Hello, I'm uh, Hugh Hall. I'm the principal at Fife College. Uh, welcome and thank you for taking the time to join us at our uh, virtual open day. Uh, here at Fife College, we offer 400 courses over 40 different uh, subject areas that provide the essential skills uh, to fuel the Fife economy um, and provide opportunities for individuals and, and, and business to succeed. Um, we offer a wide range of opportunities from vocational training uh, and apprenticeship schemes to professional qualifications and even degree options. Uh, we've got some fantastic facilities here, state-of-the-art digital technology studios, in-house theatre facilities and, 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 and so on. But, you know, most of all, it's our amazing lecturing and other staff here at Fife College who make the experience of coming to Fife College so so wonderful. Um, in, in the last uh, student satisfaction survey, we scored an amazing 95%, uh, and that's for, for from former students, and that tells you a lot about us here at Fife College. Uh, and Fife College is an integral part of uh, the, the, the local communities in, 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 in Fife, linking into individual schools, businesses, and, and, and so on. And those links with businesses are very, very important to us. Uh, because you know that is about future employability and many people come to college with that aim in mind uh, and those links to business uh, are, are amazing help uh, to you as a, a student here and of course we're in the middle of a, a global pandemic but I just want to reassure you that um, we are very much open for business here at Fife College we deliver our learning in a blended way online as well as on campus and arrangements are put in place now for a, a, a phased return back to, to college life so please be reassured uh, that when signing up to Fife College, you will get the full student experience. So anyway, enough from me. Enjoy the rest of uh, uh, today's uh, session. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you to Fife College very, very soon. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the first ever uh, Fife, sorry, someone got really started off stage. Uh, first ever Fife College Virtual Open Days. My name is Craig Walker and I'm hosting this session. I work for Fife College Student Association. I'm joined today by some colleagues from the college's digital team who are working behind the stage um, to bring this very live event to you. Um, don't worry, we are social distancing and following all government guidelines. So the Virtual Open Day is split into four sessions. We hope to provide you with all the information um, about coming to Fife College, including courses and student support. Today's session is focused on the Faculty of Engineering, Science, Technology and Built Environment. To kick us off, we have a short video from the direc director sorry, of the faculty, Nick Engels. Take it away, Nicky. Hello, my name is Nicky Engels and I'm director for the Faculty of Engineering, Science, Built Environment and Technology. I'm delighted to be taking part in this video to give you an understanding of an idea of what my faculty does at Fife College and how we can support you on your learner journey. The Faculty of Engineering, Science, Built Environment and Technology runs a myriad of programmes from uh, STEM, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, Maths, all the way to wind turbine technician, renewables, energy, construction management, eh, and the like. We offer learning and training programs, upskilling, reskilling, second skilling, and transition programs in all the different, eh, different disciplines that you will see in an engineering, and construction, and science faculty. We have workshop facilities that I would say are second to none. Uh, and we have up-to-date engineering technologies and construction technologies and we have just recently invested over 500,000 in advanced manufacturing, digital manufacturing, hydrogen, renewables, energy efficiency for house buildings, 3D scanning, 3D uh, printing and virtual reality and augmented reality. The faculty provides innovative and sector leading learning and training courses and career study opportunities which fill particular skills gaps not only at regional level but also at national level. Career prospects in STEM disciplines continue to be an area of growth in an industry which finds it challenging to fill STEM vacancies. 
the engineering, scientific, construction and built environment sectors are also finding it difficult to fill current vacancies with individuals who possess the required skill sets to be an immediate asset to their organisation. At Fife College, we provide students with all of the attributes, including digital skills, meta skills and technical and practical competences required for them to be job ready when they enter the sector of their choice and apply for these hard to fill vacancies. Thanks, Nikki. So this session will be split up into three sections. We're going to start off with a live presentation from faculty staff who will explain all the course options and careers that are available to you. Then we'll move over to a presentation from the staff in the student experience and engagement department. And then lastly, we will end with a question and answer session. So if you do have any questions you'd like to ask, please add them to the chat window, which will be this side or that side of the window. Uh, we will try to answer as many as we can. Any that we don't will be posted on the website, so keep an eye on that in the coming days. So I'll hand over now to Dennis, Stephen and Vaughan from the faculty, um, who will answer your question, who will give a presentation first. Sorry, uh, who will give a short presentation. What are you, Dennis? Good afternoon, my name is Dennis Savage, I'm Academy Head of the Development Environment Engineering and Technology and obviously here today for this virtual event uh, just to give you a few a little insight into what we actually do within our faculty. Um, my area predominantly is construction trades, uh, engineering trades. Uh, we also have built environment which looks into the professional areas, quantity surveying, uh, construction management, building surveying and architectural technology. Now within the trade areas, as you all probably know, that during the last uh, X amount of weeks, uh, our construction industry has been in furlough. But the good thing is we are starting to come out of this and the more apprenticeships are starting to be advertised on the internet and on the college sites. So the good thing is with regards to trades, um, at this moment, we go right from the schools, uh, from S4 uh, up to SCQF Level 8, which is the HND and specific professional trade area. We have brickwork, joinery, painting and decorating, roof slating and tiling, and on occasions we have the groundworks, which is general construction operatives. And obviously, with regards to my engineering area, we have mechanical electrical. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow Stephen to talk a little bit more about that because we both interact with these areas. Areas, yeah. Okay, thanks, Dennis. Yeah, my name is Steve Nathan. I'm the academic quality manager for for engineering. Um, I'm based mainly at Stenson, however, I do have a colleague that works at the side campus as well. Um, so I'd like to talk about five five main course areas that we have um, within the engineering faculty. Uh, start off with the first one, mechanical and manufacturing engineering. You would have seen in Nikki's video a couple of videos of uh, students working in the manufacturing workshop operating CNC machines. Um, and again, this is one of the one of the courses that we run in that area. The HNC, the mechanical manufacturing area starts off a level four program. Um, so we have a, a new course that we just released this year called Gateway to Engineering, and it's available in two different guises. One of them with uh, automotive content and another one with electrical content. However, these are very much um, uh, generic starter programs with lots of um, of good hands-on practical skills um, to, to get you into the to, to engineering. Um, they're based around skills to work frameworks and um, very workshop based. Then for the rest of the mechanical and manufacturing area, we move up to NC programs, the national certificate, generally containing 12 national um, uh, certificate units and a variety of different areas. So you can look at mechanical, electrical, um, manufacturing, engineering. Again, all these courses are on our website. And we also have articulation links to university for the mechanical and manufacturing area as well. Um, the mechanical engineering, you can start off with an HNC at Fife College and articulate to second year uh, degree at university, or you can stay on and do our HND and articulate into third year at university. Um, these are really common articulation routes. We have students that, uh, that articulate to, to university on, a, on an annual basis. Um, that's a mechanical manufacturing area. I also have um, electrical and electronics as well. So again, we have um, the, the Gateway to, to Engineering program, um, the new program just released this year. And again, the electrical and electronics area follows similar format. Um, there has been a high number of uh, architectural apprentices in this area, um, and it, um, it is a really, really popular 
workforce choice. So again, it starts off similar format, level four programme, jumps into NCs, um, containing 12 credits and a variety of different electrical and electronic subjects, and then moves up to the HNC and HND in electrical engineering. And again, similar options to the mechanical programmes where you can articulate to second or third year degree courses at university, depending on which how long you stay on the college for. So lots of opportunities there um, and lots of local jobs um, as well. And we work with a number of companies who not only carry out electrical maintenance and installation, but they also carry out a lot of the um, manufacturing of specialist plant control and equipment, a lot of electronic and um, PLC controllers. Um, so lots of local factories as well as just undertaking uh, the maintenance. We also undertake a lot of the installation of the control system. So it's, there are some really interesting opportunities out there uh, for, for this area. Um, next area would be CAD. Um, CAD is uh, part of all, generally most of our engineering programmes, so most students will be involved at some part or another uh, using technical drawings, um, looking at uh, mechanical assemblies and components on technical drawings, and, uh, and then having to draw these or manufacture these in workshops. So we also have in later stages an HNC and, and CAD, Computer Aided Drafting and Design. Um, and again, this is a common programme we have. Um, for moving into modern apprenticeships and or to, to job opportunities with local companies. Um, most of the local manufacturing companies will employ um, CAD engineers to, um, to, to produce the technical drawings for, for work, workshop use um, and for, uh, for, the, for, for the products. Um, another area we have is the automotive engineering. The automotive engineering follows a slightly different route. In fact, they follow a different award and body called IMI. Um, which you'll need to see the notes, the names of the qualifications are a bit different on the website. Um, they're quite often called VRQs, which stands for Vocationally Related Qualification. Um, the automotive qualifications are very much hands-on, practical-based courses. Um, and again, starts from level four up to level seven. Um, and we offer all these programmes, not only on a full-time basis, but also on uh, a daily modern apprenticeship programme as well. Um, and again, we work with a number of garages throughout Fife for, to, uh, to carry out apprenticeship training. So, Again, very popular area uh, for the department. And finally, the last one is fabrication and welding. Um, again, a really high number of apprentice uptake this year. And um, we're looking at um, a record number of, um, of apprenticeship places being on offer um, starting this year. So there are lots of opportunities available within fabrication and welding. Um, again, starts off with the gateway to engineering programmes. However, moves then moves then up to the NC programmes and up to HNC. Um, and again, these are available both full time and through modern apprenticeship programmes. So there are some really good opportunities available there. Um, yep. Stephen, see with regards to your, I think it's your school programme, do you not build the electric car? Yep. Would you like to explain kind of about the, the fun side of things other than the academic side of things? Yep. So last year we took part in a, a Green Power Challenge and we've got two um, small electric cars. Um, that students have built as part of uh, part of the introduction to engineering programmes, and um, we raced these at, um, at East Fortune Racefield, um, along with um, Green Power uh, last year. Um, our car actually came first for the, um, the over 21s class as well, so uh, the team done really well. Fantastic. Could you could you explain with regards to uh, links to industry, with regards like to Shell? Um, yep, we've got um, a girls and energy programme, um, which uh, is, uh, again, a really, really successful course. So looking at running two of these programmes this year um, from Leedmouth campus. Um, again, the Shell Girls and Energy programme contains five uh, skills to work units. Um, it's a mixture of electrical and, and energy related units. Um, and it's also heavily um, uh, supported by Shell. Um, and it's, uh, there, there's lots of industrial visits. Um, and are lots of um, connections with local employers just to show exactly what's involved with the, with the engineering industry. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yvonne, would you like <laughs> to continue? So I'm um, academic and quality manager for the science, mathematics and STEM in the college. So again, we have a variety of courses that take you from level five to level eight. Um, we have precursor courses at the schools where we have a, a day release HNC programme and a professional development award in botany science and that is done in S5 and S6 um, and we have obviously scientific technologies foundation apprenticeship which is also in S5 or S6 which we're offering as a one-year course that's a really exciting opportunity for the school pupils 
Um, when we start off in the level fives and sixes, they're a mixture of the three sciences, three traditional sciences, chemistry, biology and um, physics. So on those two courses, you can do a combination of different things. You can do from nat five to higher. We also have higher human biology at night and nat five biology at night. So we have night courses as well. Um, and the good thing about the fives and sixes is they are the underpinning knowledge for modern apprenticeships. Um, we have a really strong link with employers and we take on a lot of modern apprenticeships. So it gives you an opportunity to be employed with a company and go on a day release basis. Then we have our HNCs um, going into our HNDs and we have two routes within the HNC. We have a chemistry based route and a biology based route. Um, they're obviously heavily involved with industry too. We're really fortunate in that we have strong links with industry. So we have industry experts who come in and teach the students, um, and which really helps. And therefore, we've developed opportunities for the for the companies to come in and, and um, speak to students. And sometimes they've given the opportunity to um, take up employment with them, the opportunity to have apprenticeships with them, which is really quite exciting. Again, like Stephen's area, we have articulation from HNC into first year of university and H&D into second year of university. And obviously the HNC is uh, the underpinning knowledge of a lot of our apprenticeship programmes as well. We also have a huge partnership with NH Slovian and we have a School of Health Science and Technology based in St John's Hospital. And that's given uh, the students a huge opportunity to be taught by industry experts. Um, so yeah, so science did, is very exciting. Sorry, Yvonne, did, did you not have some success with regards to national awards? Yes, we've had quite a lot of success with, um, in particular, our links with the uh, uh, employers. We've got huge connections there where uh, they come into the into the college and they talk to students and usually, um, quite often, the students got really good interaction in a question and answer session and from that, they'll then offer them a position. Um, a lot of it is laboratory based our courses, so the industry experts have given us um, technologies and opportunities that would use in industry. So we also have opportunities to, for students to, to go into industries and have day trials, and have day experiences. So they can try different areas of, of science. And in the maths, we obviously have, again, NAT4 to, to NAT5 and higher, and that's been incredibly successful. Incredibly, and and that's really underpins STEM. With regards to STEM, the, I do know that you you have a lot of things to do with the primary schools. Yeah, we do. So we have a, a really fun, exciting time with the primary schools doing crystal growing, uh, which is really excellent. Um, and then they they go crystals in schools, and they come into the college, and they have a whole day of activities, which is great fun. Um, and then we have a, a forensic science course as well, where they, they get a crime scene, it's a murder, and they come and they have to decide who, you know, who, who's guilty and to produce evidence. So that's really exciting as well. And I take really it that's, that's done with regards to uh, your member of staff who used to be a, yeah. mur a murder investigating detective. That's right, yeah, yeah. So that's really given some reality to it. So that's, it's really exciting. I think people, and it actually sees it contextualises science and mathematics. I think that's the most important thing is contextualising the subjects within an industry. So it gives the students that opportunity. Okay. One last thing for me is we, we also, I, my area also has interior design and furniture design. And what mm -hmm. I would turn around to say is if you're looking for to see what the actual students actually do, if you can go to Facebook, there's a, a site called Bra Ideas. As it says, the old Scottish bra word, ideas. Mm -hmm. And you'll see how good the students are and their small videos and everything on there as well. So, anything else for you guys? Um, likewise, there's quite a bit of uh, videos and um, picture clips from various uh, student projects within uh, Twitter. If you search for myself on Twitter um, and look at past posts, you'll be able to find uh, quite a lot of information there about um, what kind of projects the students have been up to at various points of the year. So, um, we've got some. things on the, on the website as well of, of really success stories with um, in particular, modern apprentices who've come to the college, done the modern apprenticeship with us, and then then on going to do really good things. And um, a lot of the H and Ds and H and Cs go on to university. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Craig, great, thank you very much to Dennis, Stephen, and Yvonne. Now, Stephen and Yvonne will be joining us later for the Q and A session. 
So remember, if there's anything you do want to ask, please ask. Anything we don't answer today will be posted onto the website as well. Now, I'm going to hand over to a video from my colleague Jade, who is going to introduce the award-winning Five College Student Association. Over to you, Jade. Hi guys, my name is Jade. I am one of your presidents with the Five College Student Association, the FCSA for short. Um, so once you become a student at Five College, you're automatically enrolled in the Student Association. Um, so you have complete access to help and support from us. Um, if you just want to take part in our fun events such as freshers, or you want to raise awareness for a cause that you support, um, we can help you do that. Um, if you want to take part in sports or set up a team, we've got all of those things on hand as well, and we can give you any help and support that you need for your learning and lots of other different bits and bobs of advice for your life. Um, so yeah, we're the Students Association and we welcome you to Fifth College. Thank you, Jade. Now joined in the studio by Jules from Inclusion and Donna from Guidance. They're going to give you an overview of all the support services you can expect to receive while at Fife College. Jules. Hi, my name is Jules. I'm the Lead Advisor for Inclusion here at Fife College. I'm here today just to give you an overview of who Inclusion are and what we can do to help support you in your college journey. So who are Inclusion? Here at Fife College, we believe that everyone is entitled to take part in learning and to realise their own potential. If there's anything which could get in the way of your ability to learn or participate at college, or you find that you're encountering a problem with your learning, a good starting point is to talk to a member of the inclusion team. The team is full of ideas to make learning a reality. We want to work with you to develop your skills, confidence, motivation, independence and expertise in learning. We realise that every student is different and we do what we can to make the college accessible and inclusive to all. The team can work with you to identify suitable strategies that will support your learning and provide the right support to meet your needs. The inclusion team has student learning hubs on every campus and students can drop in for study skills, advice or attend regular one-to-one -one or shared support sessions. We've also got student advisors that can provide mentoring support and we've got inclusion assistants that can provide support in and out with the classroom. So what else can we do for our students? Well, if a student identifies that they feel they've got an additional support need or a barrier to their learning. It doesn't have to be diagnosed. It could just be something that you struggle with. The first step would probably be to contact the inclusion team. You can do that by giving us a phone or by emailing us. We'll then sit down and have a discussion with you over the phone, by email, through video call, and create something that we like to call a personal learning support plan or a PLSP, which is easier to say. The PLSP interview is a discussion between yourself and the student advisor to identify your strengths and weaknesses. We'll then look at what you struggle with in the past and what you think you might struggle with in the future. And we'll com come together to decide some strategies to try out to try and make you more independent and to succeed in your college course. We also ask for feedback from your lecturers as the course progresses to make sure this level of support is appropriate and you're getting the right support to meet your needs. We have a number of different types of assistive technology that we can use to in your support in classes or at home. Technology is getting more and more popular to use. One of our student advisors likes to say that she's got an app for everything. Um, I know that I personally use assistive technology. Like a lot of you, I've really struggled to proofread my own work. So I use the text to speech um, software on the computer to proofread my own work before I submit it. We've got loads of different technologies to try out and it's just finding the right one that meets the student's needs. If you are a British Sign Language user, we can provide a sign language interpreter if that's needed. A number of staff can also do basic sign. We can provide study materials in an alternative format. So that might be putting on different coloured paper if you have a visual stress disorder, changing the font or size or putting it into Braille. We can provide support in class and for assessments if that's required. A lot of students come to us directly from school and they've had support from a PSA in class. It might be that that is needed in college as well, or it might be that we look at your support and change it as time progresses and you become more independent. We can help organise with workload. We understand that uh, people have got things going on out with college. You've got lives, you've got jobs, you've got families. So we can help you prioritise your workload and organise your um, coursework so that you're not going to fall behind. We can loan out specialist equipment, for example, um, specialist chairs if you've got a back problem or specialist keyboard for risk support. And if you're doing a course at HNC level or above and you've got a specific learning difficulty, health issue, physical mobility issue or sensory impairment, you may be eligible for disabled students allowance 
if you think you might fall into that category, get in touch with us. We'll have a chat and we'll um, see if you're eligible. And if you are, we'll support with the application for that. Um, even while working remotely, we can still support our students as well. A number of inclusion team um, are going into virtual classrooms, taking notes, um, providing um, distance study support as well. So there's loads that we can do. If anything uh, I've mentioned sounds like it would be a benefit to you, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. As I said, you can give us a call just on the college number or you can email learning at fife.ac.uk. Our information is also available on the college website. Okay, let's pass you over to Donna. Good afternoon. So my name is Donna and I'm a guidance advisor at the Hobbies campus in Dunfermline. I'd like to begin with just telling you a little bit about myself. Not so long ago, I was a student at Fife College. As a single parent, I decided to come back to college and I was actually one of Dennis's students, Dennis that was on at the beginning of the live event. Um, I did on the construction course and learning practical skills in areas such as painting, joinery and general building. I then decided to change career and I studied social care. I also volunteered in various local organisations at the same time. My chosen course provided me the knowledge and transferable skills to help people change their lives for the better. So just to explain, students have different reasons for coming to college. Some students wish to go down the academic field of interest, others wish to give an advantage in the job market. Some students just wish to meet other people with different backgrounds but with similar interests. Regardless of your journey, guidance are here to advise you and support you throughout your journey at Fife College. The guidance work across all campuses. We offer confidential support with personal matters, financial concerns, course issues and anything else that may arise. We'll spend time with students, find practical solutions or signpost to someone who can help. We offer appointments every day on every campus and it can be face to face, telephone or even via email. We work closely with lecturers to offer workshops in class, delivering activities and events throughout the year on a variety of topics such as SAS and UCAS. We also provide class presentations discussing and highlighting a range of issues within health and wellbeing. Now, the guidance team also have a close working relationship with young carers and care experienced students. So we understand that there is a lot of students that are in this circumstances. Um, so if you've maybe not ticked the box or let us know, please get in touch. But we work with organisations and provide information and support as well as making referrals. The guidance staff also work with lecturers and key teams in the college to support vulnerable students or those experiencing difficulties. Guidance staff also have a safeguarding responsibility in the college and we follow up with any students who have been highlighted as a cause for concern. We work closely with attendance advisors, student funding and Jules team, the inclusion team, ensuring that we provide the best support for our students. Within the college, there's also a counselling service and referrals are made via the guidance appointment. Now, as I say, we work with attendance advisors. Their role is to monitor and attend, uh, to look at the contact students when their attendance is falling below certain levels. Attendance advisors can engage with students, to discuss any issues of, that they're experiencing, working alongside academic staff to ensure that the best support possible is on offer. Now, what we actually find is a lot of students are actually enrolled in courses. They may have signed up in November, December last year. Their, circum their situation may have changed. They might be at a different dress, maybe change their mobile number or even an email address. If this is the case, can you please either phone the college, which is 0344 2480115, or you can even, sorry, email in as well. So it's info at fife.ac.uk, because we will be sending information out with regards to funding and maybe anything to do with your course, and it could be text via email. So it may go in your junk box, or let's say you may have changed the details. So please let us know. Now, looking at the amount of questions that are actually coming in from these live events, I know a lot of you are concerned with regards to the student funding. Please note the student funding is not actually available yet. The forms have not came out. They have actually come from the Student Funding Council, which is government related. So the funding team don't actually have that information yet. But just to give you a bit of background, um, any students that are actually applying to come to a course, so any students that are in further education, which that's individuals enrolled to courses up to, including a level six, so that's example hires, they're required to complete a student funding award application form and the guidance can offer support here. Concerning the funding forms, let's say they're not available, we, but the funding team will be in touch with you normally the end of July. Um, but we're waiting on these policies and pre procedures through the, the funding council. We're not sure if it's going to be a paper copy or an online copy. Um, but let's say as soon as we know, you will also know. So you can apply for a bursary or EMA. You only get one or the other. You don't get both. 
EMA is for students that are age under 18 at the start date of the course. So the college can also look to help with travel costs, childcare and accommodation costs. Now these sections are also part of the funding form, they're not separate sections altogether. If you're unsure about the evidence that's needed to complete your funding form, or you've got any issues getting the required evidence, you can get in touch with our student funding team. So maybe you're concerned in regards to your situation, maybe you have a part-time job, maybe you rent, mortgage, you can email the student funding and they can give you some background information of what you may be eligible for. Let's say we don't have all the figures just now, but their email address is studentfunding at vife.ac.uk. Now, if you're a SAS student, that's individuals enrolled in a level seven or above course, which is like HNC, HND level, you apply for your tuition fees, bursaries or loans or living costs. Now that's through the SAS website. They are open now, so you can actually go in and apply. The SAS students can then also apply to Fife College for help with rent or childcare if eligible. So let's say you go to SAS, get all your confirmation evidence that you have got the payments there. And then once the, the funding has opened for the college from the Student Funding Council, you can apply to the college and we'll send out the forms on that side of things. Now, just like to finalise, to inform you the diversity of students at Fife College. Um, like I said, when I was um, at college, I done the construction course and there was, they were all men. It was 18 men on the course, age 16 to 65. For example, we also have students in their 80s studying photography. We've got young people who are still at secondary school within the college and they're helping to prepare for their future career. More recently, we have a gentleman in his 70s studying beauty. His wife became ill with dementia and he was there to take care of her and learn these skills. So on behalf of myself and the rest of the guidance team, thanks for listening. We'll look forward to welcoming you to Fife College. Feel free to get in touch. But available throughout the summer break. So even though the lecturers are finished or they're finishing up this week, any of the support staff are still available. So you can email or you can phone in. Customer services are there, attendance, inclusion, guidance. Um, our email address is guidance at fife.ac.uk. Thank you. So Donna, if a student wants a guidance appointment during the summer, what sort of uh, format would that take? What would the kind of questions would be asked? Well, let's say to start with, they can either phone the customer services or they can email, which is info at fife.ac.uk or the guidance team. Um, we'll arrange a mutual time to get back in touch with them because I understand there's different circumstances. People are caring for different family members and things like that. So we would phone them back at a suitable time. It'd be a 20 minute or a 40 minute appointment and go through or direct them to what area that they're looking for. Um, the other day we had someone that was facing a situation that they worked in the bank and because of cutbacks their, their job was on the, the line and they were going to get made redundant. So we looked at what their passion was, where their interests were um, and what courses were available. Financially, they needed to also work at the same time. Now, full-time college is 16 hours a week. Obviously, with what's going on just now, these will be restricted by the, what hours they'll actually be on campus. But majority of our students are actually working at the same time or volunteering. So they're putting into practice what they're learning, um, which is brilliant. And let's say it's a concern regarding the, the financial situation. There's systems out there that you can go and check what benefits you might be entitled to. And let's say a student funding team are there, but we can keep on touch with them. Um, we can, there's a career um, link that we can check and it's the progression. So a lot of people maybe come into a start course, like say I done construction and then I went on to social care. But even in the, the initial so social care course I went, all the courses in the college are like a stepping stone. So we explain that you start with one and then there's about three different routes that you can go. So everyone goes in different directions of where their interests are. And let's say if they're requiring, if they've maybe had any background, maybe at school they had difficulty, um, and maybe they had a, some support in school, then we would come on to yourself. So I don't know, with regards to inclusion, let's say we would pass then on to you. Yeah, we would then just sit and have a chat and see what barriers have been faced and come up with an individual plan on how we can support the individual to overcome those barriers and to succeed as college as best as they can. I think we work quite well as a team yeah. back and forward. If we've got one concern or any queries. It's lots of partnership working yeah. within student experience. Yeah. And management. I think that, let's say, there's like, you don't know what's going to happen. You'll sit there and say, no, I don't need guidance. You can see the society, you don't know what's going to happen today, tomorrow, next week, but we're there to offer support and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you very much, Paul. And now Jules is going to stay with us as we move into the Q&A session. Just while we're setting up, I'm going to address a couple of issues because we can see lots of questions are coming in, which is great. Um, so a few have asked, when will your course start? 
the college's intention is that most full-time courses will start from the week commencing the 31st of August. And that's the Monday, so your first day may not be a Monday. However, we'd say there will be a significant percentage of that will be online delivery. We've asked about um, working in um, practical classes. I think Stephen and Vaughan uh, will be able to provide more information, but we would expect to be coming in to do at least part of your course on campus, socially distance and following all government guidelines. OK, thank you. We'll move on to the questions. Um, the first one is, when we go back to college, do we still go to the same classes as before? Um, in, in terms of the same classroom, I think the classrooms will be indicated on the timetables, which will be sent to the students. Great. So it might not be the same classrooms. Perfect. Um, if you don't meet your conditional offer, in this case, not five MIAFs, is there any way you can do it at the college? Yeah, we have. You, you can do it as part of a, there's a, a nighttime class that you can do. There's a, a, a one evening a week, six to nine o'clock, you can come. It's on this campus, and I think in St. Cody campus, you can come and do Nat 5 Maths. Yeah. Some courses also have alternative routes yeah. as well. So if you don't have the Nat 5 Maths or, or English, then there may be a, a level four programme available in that area. That's right. And you could do that instead mm -hmm. of the maths. It would, it would allow you to gain um, uh, a better understanding of that area rather than just doing the maths on its mm -hmm. own for one year. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I did MPA Level 5 Construction. Do I have to apply to change to built environment? Yes. Um, um, no, sorry, the, from, from MPA Construction? Um, MPA Level 5 Construction. Um, yeah, you would need to um, to contact uh, the academic quality manager for that area and he would be able to suggest how to, to do that. Great. Um, again, if you need any further information, this will all be on the website as well. So as Stephen's mentioned, all the links and details are there for that. Um, is mechanical engineering still being held at the Scythe or is it going to be moved campus? Um, at the moment, we're planning for a Scythe. Um, we're just in the process of sort of tank tables out for it. So it should be, um, yeah, we're, we're planning for a Scythe delivery. Um, I'll take the next one. Will we get a full induction, such as a tour when we start? Um, induction is planned to take place between the 21st and 28th of August to deal with the situation. It will be all online, however, there will be virtual tours, and actually when you are allowed to, or when we can get back on the campus, you'll get a tour of the workshops then. Um, okay. How will the distance learning and HNC electrical engineering course work? Is, are there any practical elements, or is it just portfolio work? Um, the majority is theory based, um, so the programme is mostly completed online um, and uh, similar to engineering systems and we also run a distance learning and fabrication and welding and again it, um, it's mostly theory based units and um, there are some assessments required on campus but the majority of it can be done by distance learning. Um, now quite a lot of you have asked about timetables, we are working on the timetables and they will be sent out to you as soon as we can. The idea is when you get the timetable they won't really change much from them so you can plan However, if the guidance or guidelines change, then there may still be some things that are affected. Um, for the HNC Applied Science, is there a way to do both the chemistry and biology sides of the course? There, you can do a combination of units within that. So if you do HNC Applied Science, you, you, even if you're doing the chemistry route, you still have to do some biology options and, and, and vice versa. So And then you can specialise. So there is a chance to actually do a mixture of both. There's mantra units on the framework and then you could do a combination of biology and chemistry. Great. Um, I applied for the HNC and Petroleum Engineering and want to do this on distance learning, which was adver advertised. How do I confirm this is a study mode I will be doing? And the HNC Petroleum, yeah, is a distance learning programme. There's applications uh, available online. So if you complete an application on the first basis, then we'll get back to you um, and conduct an interview and, and take it from there. Okay. Um, I am doing a construction course. Uh, will I need any speci special equipment, trousers and boots? Um, no, PPE is provided as part of the programme for, for all courses, yeah. Um, is there a place to view the course spec syllabus for each HNC applied science? Is there a, a place to see the curriculum that's within that? There is. There are sways being sent out which will be available on the website soon. They're just, I think they're going out next week. And they were able to change them. I think we're adding in extra information on them to make them more comprehensive for the students. Okay. Um, are there a set amount of hours in a work placement? 
Um, if so, how does this vary across the different levels of courses? I think this will be your area. Yeah, um, we, have, we have some programmes that operate work placements. Uh, Foundation Apprenticeships is certainly one of them. Um, however, usually they would take place during the Easter um, or October breaks. Um, generally, they're, they're, um, it's, a, it's a working day, 9 to 5. Um, however, the majority of our full-time programmes are, are just that, it's full-time at college, there aren't any work placements associated with them. Um, however, we do encourage students to, to make contact with local companies um, to, uh, to undertake work placements um, throughout their, their course. Great. Um, I've never had an official diagnosis of having or needing learning support. Can I still access this at the college? Yes. You don't have to have a learning difficulty to access support for inclusion. We will support any student who feels they've got a barrier to their learning. It might be that it is an underlying condition, but we don't diagnose that. We would just look for your strengths and weaknesses and try and find ways to overcome the barriers that you face. Okay. Um, what are the different levels of the mechanic courses? Uh, for mechanic, in, uh, in terms of automotive um, engineering and motor vehicle, it starts off at level four. Um, as I mentioned um, earlier, we have a new programme called Gateway to Engineering. Um, and there is an automotive stream available for that. Um, again, it contains very transferable skills. So if you get happy through the programme, utilise it, maybe it isn't for you, more of an interest in mechanical or electrical, there's options for that. Um, however, yep, automotive programmes start at level four, and then we also offer full-time programmes at level five and six afterwards. The five and six programmes are also part of the modern apprenticeship programme as well. So if you stay on and complete a full-time course with the, us at college, it significantly um, simplifies the modern apprenticeship programme because you're covering like similar work. Um, I'm nervous because I don't know if I'm going to be the only girl in my class. How will the college help? I think all the lecturers are very supportive regardless yeah, of yeah. gender. Um, mm -hmm. we, they're very, they've got academic tutors, that's called. Name that's right, we've got name there. contacts. Um, and they'd be supporting them. And, Obviously, you can come and speak to any of the support staff if you do feel nervous or anxious. Um, guidance are available, so are inclusion, if it's just has someone to chat to um, to talk about worries or concerns. Okay. Um, what can we expect at the start of the more practical courses, such as furniture? Uh, will the start date be delayed or the class split to adhere to social distancing rules? At the moment, we're looking at a staggered start. Um, so all companies, uh, can, uh, all courses, as Craig said, start on a week commence on Monday, the 31st of August. Um, however, looking at um, those starts being initially online for practical courses, um, we're looking for them to start on campus at the moment. Plan for the Monday commencing week, uh, sorry, week commencing Monday the 14th of uh, September. Um, mm -hmm. And it will be a staggered start, so they may not all start that week, but we'll be looking for those to start between then and um, the October break. Okay. Um, are info students entitled to any sort of funding as it's not been made clear? Um, someone says we aren't part time, so um, will we also get access to facilities for printing as that's the main part of my course? Should have the same allocation. Same allocation, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah okay. um, could you provide some information on the gas engineering course, um, including if there's any work placement part of the course? So I could give in that, that information needs to come direct from, uh -huh. the, from the department. Um, could update after this. Yeah, so again, we'll post the answers to those questions on the website. So if you keep an eye on the website in the next couple of days, we'll get that to you. Um, so I had support at high school. Will I get the same support at college? Um, you might do. It depends on what course you're going on to. A lot of students get support at high school because they struggle with certain elements of the, the way it's taught at school. So if you maybe struggle with extended writing, you maybe got support in English. If you're coming to college to a more practical class where it's got a lower level of writing needed, it might be that you don't need support in every class, it might just be certain classes. If you do feel that you might need support for any element in your college course, please get in touch with inclusion. So just email learning at fife.ac.uk or phone the college phone number and ask to get put through to one of the team. We'll have a chat with you about what support, why you got support at school, and then we can see if support is still required at college. If it is, we can put that in place for you. If it's not, we can look at alternative ways to support you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so the next question uh, is, if I need to change the order of my preferred courses, who would I speak to? You would just email in um, applications at vive.ac.uk and they'll be able to change that for you. Um, uh, question, could someone explain what are foundation apprenticeships? 
So fact, we're, yeah. I know we've both gone here. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's an opportunity to to gain some knowledge, but also to have a work placement element with it as well, and work placement or industrial challenge. So it's an opportunity to see what what um, what employment is out there and what the different aspects are. Mine is scientific technology, so you may want to work have a different placement to somebody else. So you might be keen on. On working in the chemical industry so you'd look to work with a chemical company and then and then you might decide not to so it's a way of actually contextualizing what you're learning i'll say that sir yeah yeah and uh, the two key areas of the program uh -huh. is, uh, is the hand skills and the, yeah um, and the theory and the modern the foundation apprenticeship um route is to yes contextualize both these um and the program is there anything else you would like to say to the students about your areas before we finish up this session? Oh, no. um, Put you on the spot. What well, opportunities <laughs> available for courses? Um, yeah. Yeah, and just uh -huh. keep check, um, the, the check on the website, have a look and see what availability there is. If there's any, any queries you've got regarding any of the, the programmes, just to get um, in touch via the college website. Um, we get emails on a regular basis and we, we answer these generally quite um, the same mm -hmm. day. So. Um, yeah, just in touch if there's any questions. Yeah, I think just the same thing. If, if there's anything that you're not sure about, anything you need to know, um, then people are just encouraged to email in. And I think probably one of the key things is people always ask about the about employment um, afterwards as well as progression to university. So obviously we can and answer those questions as well. Great, thank you very much. I hope you've all found that helpful and informative. Sorry if we've not got to your question today. Again, keep an eye on the website along with the question and answers, all the videos and everything from today will be hosted on there. So I'd like to say thank you to Jules, Yvonne, Stephen, um, Dennis, that was his name, and Donna, who were here earlier. Uh, we're just going to close now with a short video of what it's like to study at Fife College. Thank you. It's a big decision, isn't it? Where do I go? Which path's right for me? Maybe it's simple and your degree journey starts right here. Fife College offers over 400 courses across 40 specialist subject areas. We're driven by a vision of success and we are the route to the qualification that's right for you. So why travel further for the same result? Fife College, your degree, your journey starts here.